Righto, Captain Georgia here. This is Captain Georgia's Armory. And we are going to be looking at a replay of the AMX 5120. Um, this is a Tier 9 French heavy tank featuring an autoloader gun. I have not had this tank very long. Don't have a lot of battles in it. And it's basically stock. So, for upgrades on this tank right now, no tracks, no engine. I got a radio. Yay! Oh wow, that actually that actually is a surprisingly big upgrade. Um, I'm actually glad that I have that radio, uh, or else my signal range would absolutely blow. The only like real kind of upgrade that I have is I have the middle gun, which is the same gun from the AMX 5100, the 100 millimeter SA47. So that's not too bad. Um, I don't yet have the top 120 millimeter gun. I, I don't even have the tracks. Uh, but, you know, this gun is still pretty good. It's got 232 penetration, 300 damage per shot, reasonably accurate at .36, and a 3 second aiming time. So, uh, I uh, transferred my crew from the 5100 into the 5120. So I've got 100% uh, six cents and 50% repair on my commander. My uh, gunner has 100% repair, or I mean 100% snapshot and 59% repair. My driver has 100% smooth ride and 58% off road driving. And my radio operator is also a loader, so he's got 100% repair and 61% safe stowage. Uh, quickly, reasons behind these skills. Um, the repair is pretty obvious. You know, it, pretty much every tank is good to have repair on it. Uh, commander with six cents. Knowing when you're spotted is crucial in all tanks. And tanks with no armor, it's even nicer to know when you're spotted. Because if you're not spotted, you're not being shot. So that's good. Uh, smooth ride and snapshot on the gunner and on the driver are to help with the aiming time of the guns. One of the Achilles heels of French tanks is that while they have this autoloader that's capable of laying down a big burst of damage in, in a, you know, relatively short volley is that you can load the gun quite a bit quicker a lot of the time than you can aim the gun so you know you might be loaded in two seconds but then you have to sit there for an additional second to aim that doesn't sound like much but when you're trying to dump a six shot clip those seconds really add up so minimizing your aiming time as much as humanly possible in french tanks means that you're much more likely to actually be able to fire your whole clip or, you know, to just fire more of your clip without taking any, or at the very worst case scenario, you don't take as much return fire. Uh, Off-road driving on the driver, I've gone with that because mobility is a huge part of how these French tanks operate. So I want to give my driver skills that increase his mobility. Um, especially right now, this tank is stock, it is... It is underpowered in the engine department, and it doesn't turn that good because it doesn't have enough engine power. So I need all the help I can get mobility-wise, at least until I get the engine and tracks. And with the radio operator slash loader, uh, safe stowage is kind of a no-brainer. If you get ammo racked in a tank like this, you're just royally buggered. So reducing the chance of getting ammo racked is definitely nice. Um, quick look at my... Uh, Modules. These are the same modules I had on the 5100 and for the same reasons. Vertical stabilizer and enhanced gun laying drive to reduce my aiming time for the same exact reasons as I said with these skills. just want to cut that aiming time to reduce the amount of return fire I can take and make it easier for me to dump more of a clip quicker. And uh, improved ventilation. The improved ventilation helps with everything. It increases your repair, it increases camouflage, it increases driver skills. It decreases aiming time, it makes your gun fire more accurately, it allows you to reload your clip faster, it allows you to reload shots in the clip faster, just, you know, everything under the sun helped by improved ventilation. So that's how I have my tank set up. And even though this tank is stock, uh, I just want to say that you can still do work in this tank. That's what this, that's what this replay is going to be about. Uh, we're going to take a look at the replay now. Uh, it's a Himmelsdorf battle. Um, this was a battle where, at the end of the match, we had to trust to the capable hands of some other players on the team, and I think at some points in this, I might actually have been pretty rude, so I'm just going to kind of apologize in advance for that. 
Um, but we end up winning, which is good, makes me happy. And uh, for a stock 5120, we were able to do some serious work in this battle. I don't know what it is about me, French Tanks, and Himmelsdorf, but I get along really, really well with Himmelsdorf when I'm in French Tanks. Uh, if you're, if you've watched my channel, I've got, I've got two Amex 5100 videos called the Himmelsdorf Hitman, because uh, I mean, something about it. When I play French Tanks on Himmelsdorf, it's usually a good time. So anyway, that's enough time in the garage. Let's watch things explode. So we're loading into battle in the Amex 5120, and here we are on Himmelsdorf. It is a standard battle, it is a tier 9 battle. Uh, four tier 9s on the enemy team, including two very nasty tank destroyers. Um, four tier 9s on my team, we've got a Centurion 7 Mark I, we've got uh, M103, we've got an IS-8, and we've got my 5120, which is stock. We have uh, two Relic 2 IS-6s, those guys, I'm just going to come out and say it right now, they win us this game. Um, so yeah, I think, I can't remember if this is the game where I was a little bit of a dick, or if that was a, a different game I played in my IS-6 later, but if this is the one where I was kind of a dick, I apologize in advance. Um, right, so right away, deployment, I'm not really entirely certain what I want to be doing with myself here, because I'm in kind of a rough spot. You, you know, you definitely do not want to deploy a 5120 onto Heavy Tank Alley. Don't have the armor, don't have the staying power. Like, pitched frontal combat, not what this tank does. So I know I'm not going to 8-line Heavy Tank Alley. I'm, I'm not doing it. Like, straight up. I don't care if it's empty. I'm not doing it. Uh, the hill, if I was fully upgraded, might actually be a good idea in a standard battle. Because I can probably go up there and just smash down their medium tanks nice and fast reload and then roll down the hill and start shooting guys in the back so that might the hill might be a good idea but i'm not fully upgraded i'm actually really slow so i don't want to take a slow tank up the hill so i decided to come over to the railroad tracks and i'm just going to come out and say it right now when himmelsdorf i hardly ever fight on the railroad tracks i don't like them my least favorite part of this map but i think it's about the only place where i can be effective so i come over here and I managed to get some shots through a window into a T-69, and he's not really paying attention. So I get three shots into him. Uh, unfortunately, the third one bounced. And then, foolishly, I back up to shoot at that IS-8. I've been spotted by the T-69 and the Alpha Panther, so I shouldn't have backed up to take those shots. And I paid the price for my lack of vision. Uh... <laughs> to quote Emperor Palpatine in Return of the Jedi. Um, and I lose almost 800 health right off the bat. Not only that, but my turret jams, and so I've actually used my repair kit. So now if I get detracted in a bad spot, or if my gunner ammo rack breaks, I can't repair those. And uh, with the six-shot autoloader for the 100mm gun, I have a fairly long reload time. Not as bad as on the 5100, but it's still pretty long. So, I mean, I really don't want to be hanging around for long periods of time ammo racked. Now, I can see a big push up on the hill, and I have some snipe shots into it. So I'm going to take what shots I can at guys up there. I managed to get one into the M46 Patton, and uh, then I lose spots on everything. I fire at the T20, and my shell goes really high, and I miss try to get range on the T or on the Tiger 2 but I'm unable to do so and right here I see the T30 he's not paying attention I can kill him in one clip with my four remaining shots so I decide to try it I get the T30 but unfortunately right as I let fly my last shot he lets fly one of his boom 748 HP gone so I'm down to 228 health but at least I got that T30. I've killed the T30. I've done 2,000 damage, 2,200 damage. But in order to do that damage, I've sacrificed 1,500 health. So honestly, that's probably not a very good, a very good exchange by me. At this point, it's just a matter of time before they break through the hill. So I'm coming over here to try and figure out how I want to help defend the the push from the hill. And I think we probably have enough guys over on the zero line to do frontal combat with him. 
So I decide that I'm going to flank and I run into this T-34. I put a shot into him as I back up and he fires at me and so while he's reloading I put four shots into him. I've dropped him to 371 health but I had to pull back or else he was going to kill me. I see that he's fired at our ELC so I'm going to take advantage of his reload and I'm going to poke back out and re-engage. I managed to do 328 damage to him but my uh, my fifth shot I didn't missed, so my sixth shot didn't have quite enough punch to kill him. And he's still alive, he's got 41 health left. I'm reloading my clip again, and I see over here there's an IS-8 and a Yag Panther pushing pretty hard against a KV-3, a T-44, and an IS-2. I want to help these guys, you know, they're tier 7s and a tier 8 medium trying to face down a tier 9 heavy. I I don't have any shots on anything though, so I'm trying to move up, I'm trying to move up to get shots. I see that that T-34 has gone down, which is good because he was a very dangerous tank, dangerous to me at least. Uh, honestly, I had not realized that he was dead, so I was actually looking around this corner expecting to find the T-34 and finish him off, but he's already been killed by my teammates. This was really risky. I've been spotted. I shouldn't be doing this, but I am. I put one into the IS-8, and I back up to engage the KV-3, and I take a shot from the I take a shot from the T-49 or T-69. And at that point, I was dead to rights with that T-69 right there. So I just tried to dump everything that I had left into the KV-3 before he killed me. But I was able to, or he was able to kill me before I could finish off the T-43. So I'm now dead, and we're watching the match until it ends. Got an IS-8 going one-on-one -on -one against an IS-3. Should be a pretty easy contest for the IS-8, but I was really, really not impressed. Although it turned out that the T-69 is actually what killed that guy. And you can see our group of uh, IS-6s from Relic. These Relic second armored guys have just been taking their IS-6s to the point of contention and just beating them up over and over again. There, there goes the IS-8. He knocks out our artillery. He's now pushing into the base while our two IS-6s try to deal with that IS-3. We've got a stock Ferdinand over here doing nothing. I, like, he is now camping against nothing. I don't know what he's doing. And the T-44 is doing the same thing. Like, I don't know how much HP that T-44 has, I think 577 health. He's against a bleeping Yag Panther for crying out loud. Just drive out there and kill it. Like, it's not that hard. Oh well, the Ferdinand is using his 88 to snipe that Yag Panther. You know, just oblivious to the world, they're going to take this Yag Panther down. And the T44 is finally going for it. The Ferdinand manages to blind fire the Yag Panther to death. The IS 6s have taken care of the IS 3. We now have no idea where the IS-8 is. We don't know if he's securing our base or if he's coming up to knock out this Ferdy first, but you can bet your boots that that IS-8, after after doing what he's done in this match, you can bet your bottom dollar that that IS-8 is not just going to surrender. So here we go. Following our relic IS-6s again. You can see on the map the T-44 has gone into the cap. Good, good good move. Let the T-44 cap while these three guys fight a delaying action against the IS-8. Now the Ferdinand, unupgraded, he has absolutely no chance against that IS-8. I'm trying to pan through these IS-6s to watch them. They're both on low health. They can both be one-shot by the IS-8. So these two guys are just biding their time, waiting for their shots. They're working together in a platoon to to, you know, come behind this guy and pincer him and just hold him off so that he can't cap. He can't cap, he can't reset the cap. Very, 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 very good win from these two IS-6s. These Relic guys, you know, they won the battle for us. T-44's yelling, don't kill, don't kill. Because, you know, he wants his invader medal. I don't blame him for wanting his invader medal, but, like, in a situation like this, that guy really ought to be smart enough to know that these IS-6s aren't even trying to kill the IS-8. They don't need to kill him. 
it's going to be harder and more dangerous for these two guys to try and kill that IS-8. They're just going to try and deny that IS-8 victory. And the way they're going to deny him victory is by just holding him off. They're just holding him off. T-44 is still screaming for his invader medal. And finally, the IS-8 just drives around the corner and fails to penetrate the IS-6. So, T-44 successfully caps. And the Relic IS-6 manages to put a last hit through the IS-8. Just stellar gameplay at the end of the game by those two IS-6s to get us that win. Uh, turns out this was not the match where I was a giant dick in chat, so that makes me happy. Um, not a bad result for me. Uh, this was my double, so 25-16. That's not great, but it's not bad either. Uh, managed uh, 56,593 credits. Eh, nothing special. Kind of typical tier 9 heavy sort of deal. Pretty decent litany of destruction. Um, managed to take out this T-30, put four shots into him for 1,235 damage, and managed to do three criticals. I wonder what they were. Probably like probably like Trax, Trax radio operator or something pointless like that. Put a couple into this KV-3 right as I was dying. Uh, I got three into this T-69. One of them bounced. I got one into the Patton. Two into the IS-8, one of them bounced, and five into this T-34 for 1,500 damage. So not too bad. Uh, if we sort both matches by damage, you can see that I came out on top of my team with 4,593 damage. Our two IS-6s who carried the day here managed to pull in, excuse me, managed to pull in 2,800 and 2,100 damage respectively. Very well played to these two guys. Uh, also, you know, well played to this T-44. You know, he may not have had a very strong game, but at least he was smart enough at the end to go in and cap the enemy base. So that was good. Uh, you know, good result for this IS-6, or IS-8, rather. A little unfortunate for him that he ended up on the losing team, but, you know, there's only so much you can do. So you can see here we fired 20 shots, 17 hits. All our hits penetrated, but uh, we had some... Uh, that is not even true. We straight up bounced off the T-69. It must have been a penetrating hit to his, like, vision block or something. Because it said that one bounced when I was in the game, but it's saying here that I penetrated. And it also said that I did a crit to that T-69, and I can't think of what I would have critically hit on him. Uh, we know that I penetrated the side of the IS-8 one time, but it didn't do any damage. The really good space armor was able to take the, take the hit. So 4,593 damage. I only received five hits in turn. They all penetrated, and it was only for a potential damage of 1,990. So basically, the last hit that killed me was a was a shot that did way more damage than I had HP left. No, no real tanking whatsoever with this tank. But again, you're in a French tank. That's no surprise at all. Uh, managed to make 17. And a half K profit without a premium account, I would have lost 1200 credits. And again, you can see down here 2516 for the double. So, decent battle for the 5120. I know it's nothing epic, you know, it's not like, oh my god, you're doing so good, but it's just refreshing. You know, I'm basically in a stock tank, and really, it's a shadow of what it's going to be. But it's nice to know that you can still do work with it. When you get a good map that you like in a good situation, you're able to exploit your enemy. I feel like I exploited my enemy fairly well. Uh, you know, timing the reloads on the enemy T-34. Uh, would have been nice if the T-30 had got his big hit into me, but that was a calculated risk, and I think it was worth it to kill a T-30 and potentially take one shot back from him. I think that in the, in the long run, that was the right decision. Maybe it didn't pay off for me quite as well as we would have hoped, but... Removing a T-30 from the game is a big, big deal. Very, very dangerous Tier 9 vehicle. So all in all, I was very happy with that result. It was a fun match to play. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait until I at least get the mobility upgrades to this tank. Right now, it moves like a sleepy hut. Um, apparently, I'm really liking to quote Star Wars right now. That was uh, Luke Skywalker from uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron in the... Mission Assault on Kyle 2, where he's talking about Y-Wings. So yeah, 
Stock 5120, she moves like a sleepy hut, so watch it. Um, but at least with that 100 millimeter gun from the uh, 5100, you can do some damage back. And I think it's just going to be a really good time when I get the 120 millimeter gun. Less less burst damage in a clip, but a way shorter reload and more penetration, which is nice. So yeah, 5120 stock Himmelsdorf doing pretty pretty decent. I think I think I did pretty good. So I hope you enjoy that. And until next time, guys. This is Captain Dorja, and just remember, you can never have enough big guns. <laughs>